Hey everybody, what's going on? So BlizzCon 2023 just wrapped up and I'm going to break down everything that happened for Battle Pets and could happen for Battle Pets and all of the news related to BlizzCon 2023 and everything that's going on. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, we have Nomelia Gearheart. Nomelia comes from Warcraft Rumble promotion since Warcraft Rumble just launched as soon as BlizzCon launched. So she's got Arm Cannon Blast, which is a consecutive increasing move for mechanical types, going up to 406 mechanical damage. She's got Crush, that classic uh, humanoid type move. Deflection, which is always a great move for competitive pet battles. Uh, and also PvE. Rocket Launch, which is just, you know, charge it up the first turn, launch it the second turn, it does 731. But if you just consecutively use Arm Cannon Blast, it's probably going to be better. And then build turret, which is just absolutely amazing, and I use on many teams. In fact, right here I have it on a team with a, a call lightning. I'm trying to call lightning team out right now. And then dive bomb, dive bomb uh, being uh, 731 damage split evenly amongst the uh, enemy team. So she's a very good unit. The only thing is her health is a little low. Her speed is kind of average towards most other things, so she's probably not going to go first. But with moves like Deflection, that is quite all right for her. And how do you get Nomelia? Well, you all you have to do is you have to play uh, Warcraft Rumble up until the Hogger stage and defeat the Hogger stage, have your accounts tied, and you will get Nomelia. Gearheart. Uh, we think that the promotion ends on November 17th, 2023, so you're probably going to have to do it before then. Uh, yeah. All right, let's check out the next one. The next pet is going to be Squally. Squally comes from pre-ordering the next expansion, The War Within, and it's from the Epic Edition, which is the $90 version, and then you'll get Squally. Squally is a flying type, and you can see the stats here. Uh, that last screenshot was provided by um, Vefiral, and I want to thank Vefiral. I uh, hope it's okay that I shared that. And uh, this little card was thanks to Dragons After Dark. I have not purchased the um, $90 uh, pack yet, so I'm just uh, referencing them. So Squally has Storm Breath and Alpha Strike, Seer Magic, Lightning Shield, Flock, and Call Lightning. It's unfortunate that Call Lightning and Flock are on the same moveset, but if it wasn't, then maybe it would be a little bit broken. Uh, power is pretty good, although the speed is really low. The health is really high. Um, but the speed is also really high for a flying type. So, because flying types, until they go below their 50% uh, health threshold, are going to have that doubled speed. So we're going to see, I don't know, I could see Squally in a lot of flying comps. Who do we have next? So, next up we have Little Rathian, which comes from Classic and is also available on live servers. So if you buy the $30 pack for pre-ordering Cataclysm on Classic, then you will also get Little Rathian on the live servers. We don't have much data on Little Rathian yet, and it is like Rathian's classic sprite with a little turban, so that's kind of cute. And it's also, you know, he launched, I think he launched in Cataclysm, right? That's where we first ever seen Rathian. Uh, so he's a cute pet and hopefully he has a good moveset. Although hopefully not too good, because I don't know if I want to drop $30 on a pet, because I wouldn't be playing Classic. But uh, tell me if you're going for this uh, down in the comments. So yeah, thanks. Okay, so we got three new pets from Bundles and Collaborations. Then we also got art pieces from the Community Night. First was Super Pet Battles by Joey Richard Briggs, which I'll just go ahead and play the whole thing and let you see it. First up is Joey Richard Briggs with his film, Super Battle Pets, a charming tale of a badass turtle, an adorable corgi, and an epic battle matchup. Let's take a look.
Well, well, well. If it isn't my favorite cookie dispenser. It's been a long time, hasn't it? I honestly did not think you foolish enough to return. Guess I was wrong. I'm sure that happens a lot, huh? Funny. My level 5 tortilla is now more fearsome and powerful than ever before. Your battle pet doesn't stand a chance. Oh, I wouldn't underestimate him if I were you. Cheeto here isn't the same battle pet he was when we last fought. Then show me. Now, Cheeto, go! So after that one, we got to see The Toy Maker by Robin Spanton, which was just adorable and cute. Let's go and watch that one. Home category. This film is about a toy maker who sets up shop in Valdraken, much to the, de to the delight, pardon me, of the little scale de whelp daycare. All the audio used in this short film is from World of Warcraft, and all of the art was drawn by the filmmaker. This is The Toy Maker by Robin Spanton. Enjoy. Credit where credit is due to two amazing, amazing content creators. 
and uh, I'll try to find links to their socials or something and put those down in the comment section below. Uh, please follow them. Those were both fantastic and amazing creations. Absolutely great pet battle content. Um, yeah, I, just, I, I can't gush enough. Really good job, you two. Next up, we have the announcement of The War Within, which will have four new zones in it. And I'll dissect in each screenshot and video and try to find any pets that we can see in the different sections, in the different new zones in uh, a separate video. We'll try and like slowly dissect every little bit and see if we can say, oh, that looks like a, um, a pet. and Oh, that looks like a, maybe a quest or something. So we'll try to dissect everything and figure out what we can from the new zones or maybe even just like theming of what we, what we might be able to see in those places. Uh, but, you know, all they show you is this kind of stuff in the beginning. Um, but I will make a separate video deep diving into all of that speculation. All right. So traditionally at BlizzCon, they would have a Q&A section, a Q&A panel where fans could go up, ask one question, and the devs would answer it. Well, this year, they're not doing it that way. They're doing it sort of more a forum submission and in-person submission, and they'll be doing a separate video afterwards. And so I submitted a retail uh, question and I'll say my question here. Now, this was my question. I did submit it on the actual uh, thread and in person, not just here on the Blizzard forums, but I did submit it in the two different locations that they did request it. My actually hand got really numb writing this in person at the Darkmoon Fair. But my question was, as a player that deeply loves the pet battle system, I feel abandoned by the lack of attention Blizzard has given to that aspect of the game. Many love the pet battle system. May we see updates to the system with future patches. Clarification, not just collecting, but specifically the battling leveling system, such as barrier of entry due to the volume of pets needed to level, inconsistent PvP queue times, sometimes it takes hours, with no known reason as to why for the community. More meaningful rewards for participation in PvP. It feels disrespectful receiving pocket lint that sells for 5 copper as my reward for a weekly quest of winning 10 PvP pet battles. Uh, the, slowly, the slow or outdated animations that make the system feel sluggish, clunky, or unresponsive. And UI upgrades as it still uses the Mesa Pandaria button templates. Those are examples. Um, so just trying to give examples of what my question was asking, not just will we receive new pets to collect in the next um, patches, but will we actually get improvements to the system that they exist inside of. Uh, so hopefully that is one of the questions that they pick to answer, although I don't have high hopes because there's like 7,000 questions that got asked on the forums, so they're probably going to pick the biggest ones um, and, you know, like the ones that specifically relate to War Within mechanics that were announced. But hey, maybe. With War Bands being announced, which is uh, account-wide everything, as so it was called, uh, account-wide reputations will exist. And I'm just going to go ahead and play what the reputations bit is. Again, fairly straightforward. Uh, in War Within, reputations and renowns will work account-wide. We want to make this as retroactive as possible. That will take some work over time. We're probably going to start with Dragonflight renowns as a focus and a priority and work our way backwards. But going forward, we want progress earned on reputations to not really matter which character you're doing it on at the end of the day. It's the same content, it's the same experience. If you've gained access to some perk or some recipe, having to re-earn it, not terribly compelling. So with that, uh, it can mean the Paragon rewards, the Paragon caches from previous things like in Old Doom, how you could get uh, a pet from the Paragon Cache, like whenever you got to max reputation on character, you could continue to do that. And whenever you got that reputation bar filled again, you would get a box, and that's the Paragon box. And whenever you opened it, there was a chance for exclusive pet, The I think it's the Dune Watcher. And the chance is really low, and you have to do a lot of content to get that. But if the content's like shared between all characters, and the reputation shared between all characters, then that means Paragon reward boxes from old reputations could actually be easier to farm and get. So that is an, a quality of life improvement for uh, the collectors out there and could actually make the price drop a little bit on some of those because right now some of them go for like two to 300K on the auction house, which is like 20 to 30 bucks. And we could see this uh, Warband's reputations thing actually drop the price of that whenever it gets to Paragon reputation um, expansions. 
but of course they said with War Within, they're only going back to Dragonflight at first, and every time they can, uh, going backwards and fully backwards, because there's like hundreds of reputations, and so it'll take them a while to get to everything, but whenever they get to Paragons, that could um, make it a lot easier for us farming pets out of those Paragon reps. Then we have Cross Realm Guilds coming in WoW, uh, which could make those extremely hard to get pets from guild achievements much easier to get. Uh, such as like the Armadillo Pup, the Dark Phoenix, uh, Little Tacragosa, or the incredibly hard to get Death Watch Hatchling. Increasingly, so many of the activities that players engage in socially span multiple realms. You have a Ray group, you have a Mythic Plus group that you run with, group that you PvP with, but you can't be in the same guild together. Not any longer. That's a thing that will change when War Within comes out. Apply, recruit. Server shouldn't matter when it comes to joining a guild, when it comes to being in a guild, when it comes to accessing the perks of being in a guild. So the perks of being in a guild, having access to those very, very rare pets that people had to do like achievements on, or guilds had to do achievements and say like Warlords of Draenor or the Death Watch Hatchling, and only a few guilds have that and are still recruiting actively. And so that allows you to be able to look for those guilds and not have to be server tied not be like well i play on this and th there's literally not a guild on my server that has that achievement so i could buy that pet well now you don't have to worry about that you can be in any guild on any realm so it opens up the availability of buying pets like that much easier so congratulations everybody who doesn't have those and which is me actually um so i'll be very excited the next little bit of news is that Drakthir Soar is going to become full dragon riding in patch 10.25, which is the patch right after 10.2. Uh, I mean, I think it's right after 10.2. Um, but what that means is people can stop blaming pet battles for Drakthir not having dynamic flight. Uh, there was a misconstruement with um, Drakthir players that whenever the system launched and Drakthir could have full dragon riding in the first PTR of Dragonflight. Um, it was kind of unfair that they had 14 times movement speed everywhere and nobody else did. So it was a significant buff to them. And also there were sort of glitches in the world where they could fly through objects and stuff like that because the outdoor world wasn't ready for that. It wasn't ready for dynamic flight. And so they pulled it back. Well, whenever they pulled it back, they said, there's lots of things that um, get, I'm not going to exactly quote, but there's lots of things that the uh, Drakthir Soar being full-fledged everywhere accessible has issues with, and, you know, has issues with world quests, has issues with pet battles, and people honed in on the part where it said pet battles, and they really blamed pet battles for a while, and it wasn't that, it was just like, they break everything, they just listed Pet Battles as an example. And so people can finally stop blaming us for Drakthir Soar not being available. Um, yay. <laughs> finally. Uh, and it's also fair whenever everybody has access to it. Just they don't have to mount to do it. They have it on their own. So that's, that's really good. That is a really good quality of blame improvement. You know, they're, they're not going to blame us anymore. <laughs> All right misconstrued information then of course because it is tomorrow we have all the 10.2 information and this is just from Zufus. Uh, Zufus has a huge article here on all of the new pets available from 10.2 so do check out Zufus article for the 10.2 pets and everything that is available there are no new battles in 10.2, but it is a new zone, and I think with 10.25, probably there'll be some new battles. They're just not immediately at that first uh, patch. And a few changes do come to pet abilities that were bugged or imbalanced, but I'm not going to go over all of those. Um, there are a few, and I'm very grateful that they have balanced some of the pet battle abilities. So just in my news, I got to meet up with Light from the Pet Battle Discord, and a little shout out to Kuja who was there, but our schedules didn't line up. So maybe next year, and maybe I can even see you next year at the actual uh, BlizzCon. So there's there's me and uh, me and Light hanging out on the floor. You can see a little Dark Moon Fair in the background, 
And then as for cosplay and what I was able to find for Pet Battle cosplay, uh, there is me and what I think uh, is a trainer, a Pet Battle trainer. She was very excited to uh, get a picture. Uh, could be an explorer, but she had like four or five pets all over her. So I, I think she's a Pet Battle trainer. I'm pretty sure. I had my little uh, experience hat on and she had her experience hat on. So I think she's a Pet Battle trainer. All right. And then there was the Make Clippy a Battle Pet. Uh sign that I saw and I was like well I got to get a picture of that that's pretty amazing that's pretty fun so I grabbed a picture of these two and uh, their cosplays were just absolutely incredible I love this floating sword business that's going on down here that's pretty cool I did get my little safari hat out and I had uh, some little achievements on the side so people could know that it was a uh, battle pet safari hat and it was yeah BlizzCon was a lot of fun until next time much love and peace